My name is Amanda Chambers, um, I'm a fine artist and I work primarily in three dimensions. I'm interested in working with clay in particular, um, the sculptural possibilities of clay um, and different firing techniques to achieve those results. The inspiration for the display um, was a project that I started around 2013, um, inspired by the life of the writers Sylvia Townsend Warner and her partner Valentine Ackland. Um, I was actually introduced to the work of Sylvia Townsend Warner by my mother, who was encouraging me to read her works. Um, and it took me a little time to actually get round to reading one of her books, but the first one I read was Lolly Willows. Um, I really enjoyed her writing, I thought it was exceptional. But when I started to research a little bit more, I realised the backstory of Sylvia Townsend Warner was, was just as exciting. Um, and it was through that sort of biographical um, research that I got the main inspiration for, for actually doing a, an art project on, on both Sylvia and her partner. So the title Quiet Revolutions came from the idea that Sylvia and Valentine were working in a, in a, in a very quiet way in, in rural Dorset, um, living pretty much under the radar in terms of the literary scene in the UK at the time but they were involved in revolutionary politics. They were members of the Communist Party. They were involved in the Spanish Civil War. Um, so I really like this idea that they were sort of quietly subversive in their lives. But also I like the way that clay was resolved on a potter's wheel. And so I was working in this sort of rather circular um, environment where revolutions were important. So quiet revolutions tied the theme of the literary nature of it to the practical nature of the work. The work that particularly stands out for me is a piece called Ascent. Um, the, the project largely deals with the personal life of Sylvia and Valentine, um, and in particular a moment where a third um, per person came in, invo became involved in their lives. Um, Valentine developed a, um, a personal relationship with another author, an American called Elizabeth Wade White. Um, and it was this kind of cataclysmic moment that created, um, you know, drama in their in their life in their domestic setting, but created a, a really interesting sort of peak, um, a momentum for me to be able to sort of focus on and and to and to draw out that some of those those themes um, of what was what was happening to their relationship within this project. Um, effectively, I, I really found this this idea of a three way relationship interesting. Um, it did eventually um, fall apart and Sylvia and Valentine were able to piece their relationship back together again. Um, and the moment where that was agreed on, um, if you like, that three-way relationship split apart. So the, the piece that sort of exemplifies that is uh, this piece called Ascent. Um, and I used the teapot as a motif for if you like the domestic arrangement so the teapot sort of exemplifies the sort of physical arrangement of three people living in in one setting um, but from a technical point of view uh, it was a really challenging piece of work and it's not something I've done uh, that I'd done before or since um, and it involved um, you know a sort of a high degree of um, you know skill in terms of producing this piece of um, uh, pottery on a wheel so each each piece is hand thrown um, and then constructed and then in its its wet form um, I dissected it with a wire uh, so it was a it was a it was a challenging and scary thing to do but I actually really like working like that because that's when I get the energy from a piece of work and and hopefully that transmits itself to the audience the objects are actually made from a type of stoneware clay. Um, it's particularly groggy, it's got a sandy quality to it um, and a little bit of oxide. So in the firing, it's burnished slightly on the edges, which I found um, really nice. But it was also very good for print printing on. Um, and the way I, I did the, the printing is by using an old um, photocopier, one of the, um, and please don't try this at home, but one of the types where you can actually open it up um, and basically you're taking a wet photocopy out of the photocopier before it's heat sealed and you can use it as a transfer. Now the black in the toner fires out when, it, when it's in the kiln because it's water based but what you're left with is the iron oxide in the, to in the toner that leaves this burnished um, sepia effect. So it was, it was a very experimental type of printmaking 
um, but it actually worked really well with the, the clay and, and, you know, with the historical nature of this project. Clay is really important to my work um, and actually this project coincided with a really important phase in my practice where I was working with clay um, almost primarily for the first time. Um, it's, it's a very elemental material. It, I think it's very important to be connected to the earth um, and I think because it has this sculptural sensory quality it's in some ways very easy to talk about human beings because our relationship with clay goes right back to the pre, you know, prehistoric times. Um, so, yeah, I, and I think in terms of the domestic arrangements that I was dealing with in terms of Sylvia and Valentine's life, um, the way in which we use clay and ceramics in our everyday life um, really, really resonated. Um, and so being able to make everyday objects like bottles, teapots, um, you know, coincided perfectly with the, um, with the concept of this project. The project probably couldn't have happened without the collections and the archive at Dorset Museum. Um, and when I realised where Sylvia and Valentine lived um, and that their archive was held at the time at, at the Dorset County Museum, um, I was lucky enough to be able to make contact and arrange a visit to come down and have a look at the collections. Um, and it was incredibly exciting because not only were there, you know, original, you know, works, notebooks that Sylvia had, had left, but there were various artefacts as well. And the coat that you see in the exhibition in the main gallery is, was there and was brought up for me to see. This is a, a coat that uh, Sylvia had, had hand-stitched for Valentine. And um, it was wonderful to see these artefacts that had been written about in the books. Um, but there were also things like audio tapes. Um, Valentine was very keen on recording her own views and thoughts on tape, on cassettes, and those exist in the archive as well. Um, and the people that were running the archive at the time were, were just incredibly supportive. So I came away almost with a, an embarrassment of riches, really, too, too much information. But um, it, it was absolutely critical to be able to sort of have first-hand experience of those, those original artefacts. Um, and to be able to go back and ask, ask questions subsequently. Um, and once the pieces were, were made and created, and I, and I had a, a sort of a group, um, Dorset Museum was, was, was probably the only place I wanted to show the pieces once they were completed. Um, and it's absolutely thrilling to be able to have them here today in this incredible renovated space. So I'm absolutely delighted about that. I'd really love audiences to be able to firstly engage with the work of Sylvia Townsend Warner and, and the life of um, Valentine Ackland as well. Um, I, I mean, there's a wonderful display here, but there, there are also resources in the archive too. Um, I'd, I'd love people to be able to understand a little bit more about um, the life they led in Dorset as two openly gay women. Um, and I know this is part of LGBT History Month as well, so I think it's an important exhibition in that respect. Um, but I also think it's really important that visitors to museums get to see contemporary art as well and that combination, that dialogue, if you like, between the historical archive and collection um, approach with the inter interpretative approach of, of a contemporary artist. So um, I'm just really excited to be part of that journey with, with Dorset Museum.